Hi everybody, old guy here. Signs of masterful writing. Beginning a gigantic, sweeping, all before it historical epic with a small scene of a small person doing something, well, not so small, in this case at least, but in comparison to what comes, fairly small. Then as the small thing becomes bigger in its import to bring in larger and larger characters until you are caught up in a tornado of intrigue and politics and sweep all before it historical change where the world and the lives of everyone involved alter beyond recognition so that at the last page you are left stunned. Well, that's pretty decent. Guy Gabriel K's Under Heaven is pretty decent. <laughs> it's more than decent. It's outstanding. Now, the small person is uh, is named Shen Tai. And he is the younger son of the Katai general Shen Gao, who won a major victory against the Tagurin. Shen Tai has gone to the site of his dad's victory to bury the dead. And he does so to honor his father, who has recently passed, and to fulfill social requirements of spending a year in mourning of some kind. Now, burying the skeletons of your father's enemies is kind of an unusual mourning method, but Shen Tai is kind of an unusual person. Uh, a bit out of step with the society, as was his father. Shen Tai is more his father's son than is the eldest son, Shen Lu, uh, who was a Mandarin in the Katai court and who takes advantage of Shen Tai's absence and their father's recent passing to sell their sister, Shen Li Mei, to the barbaric Bogu as a bride to shore up relations between Katai and the barbarian north. Shen Tai doesn't know that his sister has been sold. He's up north bearing skeletons. He also doesn't know that Wen Zhao the Prime Minister of Katai, uh, who Shen Lu serves, has taken spring rain. Shen Tai's favorite concubine as his own. And also doesn't know that Wen Zhao has sent an assassin to make sure that Shen Tai doesn't object. Now this is just the opening. From here, it gets even more epic. Without getting into the specifics, Shen Tai's burying of the enemy dead is noticed and appreciated, and he is offered a gift of epic proportions, 250 Sardian horses. That's like giving 250 F-15s to the Polish army at the beginning of World War II. These horses dramatically change an army's offensive capacity. And as you can figure, everybody wants these horses, from the emperor to the rebellious general An Li. How Shen Tai is going to stay alive to collect the horses, much less deliver them to the person he chooses, well, that is one of five intertwined plots that will just blow you out of your chair. There is a last scene that is one of the most heartbreaking I have read in a very long time. Uh, it's not the last scene, but one of several that come together at the end of the book. I'll leave it to you to decide which one I'm referring to. Now, this is not a fantasy, uh, although it has its share of magical realism. This is a fictionalized account of the Chinese Tang Dynasty in its later years. It's not history, and I doubt the social descriptions are accurate, but so what? It is a very human story of very flawed humans caught in a whirlwind. 
And I'll tell you, it is one hell of a ride on Sardian horses across the northern desert. Old guy here. See you later.